patterns these days are super expensive. The price just keeps going up and up and up. I got this a long time ago. I was paid $10 for it. It probably cost $20 now. And some, some of them I may have picked up at a yard sale. I got this at a yard sale for a dollar. So I hang on to old patterns. I can style it however I want to style it. So I'm combining these colors all together to make the dress that I want. I am adjusting this pattern. I'm using this pattern to make the dress that I want to create. This dress has a seam all the way down the middle. I want it to open in the back, so I don't want that. I'm also going to have a contrasting fabric in the center. So what I did is I pieced together these two parts, which would be here and there, and I have it on the center line on the fold of the fabric so that it will just be one piece. Now, when I pin this together, let me just show you, if I lay the pattern flat, it actually doesn't line up. See, it's like this, because the, this is a more shaped design, but this is just a size four for a little girl. So I don't need to have all that. So I just lined up the beginning and the end and matched, matched it up and pinned it up that way to create this that I need. I have this pinned on the center fold, but actually I only need this section right here. I drew a line on this pattern. This is the part that I need. So that's why I pinned it to, to the center and put this back together. Also needed to lengthen the distance a half inch according to the measurements of the girls. So that's why there's an extra half inch down here. All right, now that I have this, I'm gonna fold this over on that line. Now I need to allow a five inch seam allowance. So I will cut this. There, now I have that piece. And see, I'm not destroying my original pattern. I'm just using it because it's a size that I needed size four but it's not the style I want at all now I can probably use I could use those sleeves for that except I'm not gonna put a cuff I'm actually gonna make it ruffled so I am gonna adjust the, the shape of the sleeve just a little bit now I need to cut this piece right here I want to put my center line on the fold I have the fabric folded over I can usually create what I want with whatever patterns I have. I don't have to go out and buy a new pattern every time that I want to make something. I have so many patterns in various sizes. I just need to get close to what is needed. I'm going to cut out um, this part. I need to remember to add an extra half inch down here so it's the same length, right? And let me just cut out this top part. This is the front so this neck collar will be fine. I know on my drawing I have a square neck, but I think I'm just gonna go ahead with the round neck. Less work for me. Somebody donated a whole bunch of this yellow fabric and I just wanted to use it. All right, now I have this side pinned. What I need to do is remove all of my pins from that side, remove these pattern pieces. Okay, now I remove this yellow out of the way, fold it back this way, and I also need to, when I cut this out, I need to allow the seam allowance, which is 5 eighths of an inch, make sure it's on the fold. Okay, so when I cut this, I cut the seam allowance. I'm going to take the pins off to show you how this is all going to work. I have the center piece, and this is going to go on this side. And see, now I have changed this pattern 
to my plan. Because I'm, I'm actually making dresses for three girls, three sisters. And I wanted them to have matching dresses for Easter. Because somebody gave me a whole bunch of yellow fabric. So I'm using a bunch of different patterns to create the patterns so, so they can have coordinating dresses. Okay, the one thing that I don't have with this pattern is a facing, how to finish off the net, because this pattern has a little collar. You probably can't see it very well, but there's a little collar. And so it doesn't have, because of that type of a collar, it doesn't have a facing. So I have to create a facing. So I've got my, my back and my front, and what I'm going to do is measure out the, uh, I guess I'll measure out two inches. And I'm gonna be putting a mark right around the neck. And this is how I will create a pattern for the facing to help me finish off the edge. Mark it two inches following the contour of the neck. And this one, we will place it right on the fold since this here is a center line because this plan is is to have a seam my edge is going to stop right here and we'll put a mark so that i know place on the fold right here and then we cut out that little section and i'll have my facing so i have them pinned on all i need is this section here so i don't need to worry about the fabric going any further. I will cut out this part and then I will very carefully reach underneath, lifting this up to work my way around cutting it. And I'll do the same with this. I'll cut this. This way I don't destroy my patterns, I keep them intact. So if I ever want to make that other dress again, I still have the pattern. And the markings that I made on here has not damaged my pattern. It's just made the pattern a little bit more functional. I always try to preserve the whole pattern. Even if I shorten a pattern, I will fold and pin before I cut anything off. And this is on the fold, so it'll go right around the neck. So now I have all the pieces I need. And I created this dress from this pattern. This unbuttons in the front, but I changed it because I wanted it to open in the back. And I was able to restyle this pattern because it was the size that I needed for the girl who's going to wear this dress. And I added, I haven't got the button and the buttonholes done yet, but I added a, a belt with the tie. For this, I used this pattern here. Um, you can see that these are have pants. Well, all I really care about is this top. Now, the way that this pattern is made, the top, the the back, the 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 line comes down lower than it does in the front. So I wanted to, to have it come down lower and the reason they did it that way is because this pattern is designed to have smocking well i don't want smocking i just needed the the sleeves and the yoke but i brought the yoke down just a little bit lower so i use this pattern to create the pattern for this and and i just made up this part here i was also able to use the collar for that and then the pinafore is just a shorter version of the skirt here and then I just simple straight straps and the ruffle I could show you that let me just open it up okay here's the ruffle 
it's basically just a fabric like this and I tapered it and of course it'll be gathered and so that's going to create the ruffle but actually this is a folded edge and this is a raw edge so this is the part that's going to be sewed on so that I have a, 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 a clean edge on the outside and that's how you create the ruffle and it's just simple straps so that's how I did the pinafore so I have everything cut out for all three dresses and I'm ready to start sewing to create these patterns. So here's the little dress. Now to make the pinafore, I took a strip like this that's going to be folded in half for the strap. I measured it to make sure it's gonna be the fit that I need. And then I sewed my, my, the raw edges of my ruffle in here. I also put a piece of interfacing, so this is a little stiffer. Um, I gathered it, leaving a little bit on the end of each strip. And then once that's attached, what I will do is I will fold this over and pin it, and I will sew that down to secure that strap so that we have this. And you can see how this is going to fit really nicely. Now to, once I have both of those done, the waistband, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm calling it a waistband. I'm gonna attach that to this, this way, and then same on the other side. And then I will gather the pinafore skirt to this side, of course it'll be a seam here, a seam there. So it's finished on this side, but it will be raw on the other side. And once I get that attached, then I can add this on the back side to finish it off. So it's pretty simple. will be pinned on this way so it'll go that way but first of all I got to put the front and the backs together so that it's all one piece
initially was looking at this pattern, but I don't like that big collar. I was looking at this pattern and I wound up using this pattern for the bodies and the skirt, but I didn't want it to be that full. So I reshaped the bottom skirt so that it won't be quite as full because this fabric is a little bit heavier. If it were a thin fabric, I would love it that full, but it's not a thin fabric. So I needed a size seven for the body's top. So I used this pattern for the top part. That's the only part of this pattern that I used. Now the problem with this pattern is right here, those are pleats. So this is what the pattern looks like. It's got all these pleats, there are three sizes, six, seven, and eight. So what I had to do, <laughs> By pinning it, I eliminated those pleats so that I could have the size bodies that I want. Of course, I'm cutting a size seven, so I'm actually gonna fold this over and not cut out that part, because this is six, seven, and eight. Was I used that to make my pattern. So I had some, sp some spare paper. So I made my pattern and then I did my line to divide my yoke into parts, but I didn't cut it because if ever I want to use this pattern again and I need this piece, I now have it. And I put all the information so that it goes with the pattern and that way I have it as an additional option using parts of the old pattern. And for the interfacing, this is the interfacing, I just cut off this part to have the interfacing that would go inside of using this bodice the same way that I did this for the, for the smaller size. So I was able to make this bodice with this bodice part and the sleeves, I used this pattern just for the sleeves. So don't throw away your old patterns. Even if they go out of style, save them. There are always ways to reuse them as I have done with these three dresses. So that's just a little tip on how to adjust patterns, working with what you have. So I was able to make all three of these dresses using different patterns and I have coordinated them and made a bow tie for the brother so that he can match his, his sisters. And I made each one kind of age appropriate because I think little girls should maintain their innocence. Yes, I added bloomers for the baby. And I am going to be making bloomers for this one, but she wanted her dress extra long, so hers goes all the way to the floor. So she gets what she wants. I am also making hair bows to coordinate, to complete the ensemble. I hope you learned something. Don't throw away your old patterns. You can reuse them. You can recycle them. You can restyle them. They're useful in many ways, even for generations. Save your old patterns.